I freaked out over my first endoscopy experience, so I feel like I need to share this. What's up guys, it's Jen, and I'm a holistic nutritionist that helps people with gastritis, acid reflux. The list is growing and growing every single day, and I'm very grateful to be helping people out and sharing my story. Okay, so with that said, in this video, I wanted to share with you one-on-one, -on -one, or right here, relaxed on my couch, what my endoscopy experience was like. What did I do to prep for it? What happened during it? And then what were the next steps after my endoscopy? What happened after my endoscopy? So let's get started. I'm gonna be very transparent in this video and really give you as many details as I can remember. I have had two endoscopies in the past. My first endoscopy was in 2021. I wanna say around March or April of 2021. And my issues really started, like all of my gut issues really started back in 2020. Around September, October of 2020 was when I was having my most horrible gut issues. My bloating was like I've never seen it before. I looked about six months pregnant. I am not kidding. And it felt so uncomfortable. It just felt like there was something wrong. And for me, the main region of the bloating was in the lower part of my abdomen now this actually led me to believe not that i had gut issues but that i had a uti or something i felt like it was really pressing on my bladder every time i would blow after i ate things so i thought maybe this was like an uncommon uti type of symptom but then when i went to get that checked i actually did not have a uti whatsoever so that led me to believe that maybe it was some type of gut issue which is something i had never had i was normally a very healthy person especially because a couple years before that i was vegan for about like a year or two and i took it very seriously and i don't know i just felt like i was good with my health and i felt like 2020 was like a good year that i was going to focus on my health especially because of the pandemic but little did i know that my gut health was going to lead me into a huge rabbit hole of gut issues that I had never experienced before now which I am at a healing stage and I'm able to eat pretty much everything once again okay so March April of 2021 was when I had my first endoscopy um, and this was after a couple of doctor's visits which just led me to want to really see what was going on in my stomach um, and I knew that I didn't really have any issues in terms of like reflux or anything but I knew that my main issue was a lot of bloating and a lot of gas um, so I really wanted to get that checked and one of my gastroenterologists suggested that I do an endoscopy and he also on the side gave me treatment for what was going on in my body so he just decided to give me a omeprazole which in the end ended up doing nothing for me and I feel like instead it hindered my healing process more so yeah he suggests an endoscopy he suggests that if I've been having it for a couple of months, then maybe it's time for us to really deep dive and see what's inside. So in order for me to prep for an endoscopy, I was allowed to eat, I think it was like around 8 to 10 hours that I could not eat anything. And usually endoscopies are in the morning, um, so you just try to not eat around 8 to 10 hours. Um, that's usually the time that I've gotten, at least for the both endoscopies that I have gotten before. I had actually never heard of an endoscopy prior to this. I had heard of colonoscopy so many different times because it's so popularized, but the best way that I can describe describe an endoscopy is a gastroenterologist focusing on the upper half of your body rather than the lower half but for an endoscopy for anything that has to do with the stomach or maybe even the esophagus that's probably one of the things that a gastroenterologist will suggest so i had to eat probably my last meal i want to say was around 7 p.m which wasn't too bad i still had till the morning most most gastroenterologists also suggest that you have no liquids at all no food or liquids whatsoever for the next eight to ten hours before your endoscopy so i stuck to that i tried to get really hydrated the day before so that throughout the night and then in the morning while i was getting ready for the endoscopy i was getting kind of like i was hydrated enough to be okay for the rest of the day and for the duration of what was the endoscopy okay so now let's cut to the day of the endoscopy so for that day i just remember waking up they told me to wear really loose clothing they didn't want anything to be too tight on me because they didn't want anything to be like restrictive so i pretty much wore i think it was like a set like a sweat set um which was like really comfy um, I picked a really good gastroenterologist who just had a lot of fame in that area where I lived then So I just did my research and I decided to go with him just because I trusted all the reviews that I saw before I definitely do feel like even if you do have insurance and you have a very small like uh, Like a very limited list of gastroenterologists. I would do my research 
yelp it look it up online and see um just how they treat you it doesn't mean that they're bad gastroenterologists or that they'll do something bad to you but um, you just kind of want that peace of mind going into it because you do go under anesthesia. I remember them telling me to go into a bathroom, take my sweatsuit off, and then they gave me like little scrub thingies, like the little gowns. They gave me the hospital gown and they told me to lay down for a little bit while they did like an IV and everything. So I laid down, did the IV. I was a little scared because there wasn't just me getting an endoscopy or a colonoscopy or just any type of like, you know, like there was multiple people there and we were just separate by curtain. I definitely started getting a little bit of anxiety but I just felt like I really needed to trust this process because I really wanted to know what was going on with me like end all be all like what was going on. Once it was my turn I had my gown on, I had my IV in and they took me into a room where it was the room where they were going to do the endoscopy. In the room were about like two nurses, the gastroenterologist and there was also uh, the anesthesiologist. He was actually really nice and he told me like don't like are you like allergic to anything you're good and i'm like yes i'm fine um he really gave me like that peace of mind too he was just like oh i bet you like he kind of made it a little bit of a challenge he's like i bet that in like five seconds you're gonna be knocked out once i put on the anesthesia now that i think about it that sounds kind of creepy but it just kind of gave me like something to focus on so um as i was counting down i was like i probably got to like seven or six and i knocked out thinking that i was going to get to one and i was going to be fine um and the anesthesia for me that time specifically was given through um like the mask so for the duration of about 40 minutes i was knocked out it was pretty quick and they did take a biopsy so what usually happens during an endoscopy is they put a tube with a camera the tube with the camera serves a purpose and the purpose is that they are searching for anything that is out of the ordinary whether it's cancerous whether it's malignant any type of hernia they're also able to see if you have an irritated stomach lining how that looks and they'll be able to take pictures through that tube through the camera that's attached to it after that um they took me back to the little the open room where there's like a bunch of people with like the curtains and stuff like that um they wheeled me in and everything and then i slowly woke up once i woke up i felt a little bit out of the ordinary but nothing too crazy but one thing i will always remember about this experience is the way i felt after so once i was fully like conscious and awake um, i felt like the iv really hit everything that i needed like i felt like i had so much energy and i felt just like nourished if that makes any sense like i felt normal like i felt good um and this might be because of the fact that maybe i was a little bit malnourished from the lack of food that i was able to eat because i was limiting myself like what foods i could and couldn't eat um i didn't really know what foods i could eat um and what foods i could experiment and bring back into my diet so i did have that issue for a little bit which really lowered my consumption of like more vitamins and minerals from like different foods right um so maybe that's why i feel like the iv made me feel just like amazing i literally was like okay now i get why people love iv drips because if this is how you feel afterwards then like i needed every single day of my life they brought me i think it was a granola bar and then they also brought me like apple juice and by that point i was done and they told me that i needed to stay on a wheelchair so my fiance went to pick me up um outside of like the clinic and stuff aside from that everything was good and now for the biopsies so usually the next steps after an endoscopy what you receive are biopsies which are images or a video or um any type of result so in this case um he didn't really find anything out of the ordinary thank god um one of the things that he said was that he just did see some inflammation in the stomach and that's potentially why i had the gastritis and those types of symptoms he also said that i had a very mild gerd um which at the time i didn't really knew, know too much about it but i want to say that i had a more anxiety the second time coming around because um, although my reflux symptoms and my gastritis had gone away for quite a bit, they definitely did come back and um, it came a time where I just wanted to check that everything was okay. This was by the time it was 2023. Um, I feel okay now, but I still just want that reassurance that everything is okay and that they won't find anything. Because around this time, although I felt good, like I felt like I can eat everything again, I felt like everything was fine, I didn't have the horrible bloating and the gas and everything like that or the nausea, what I did have was a little bit of like a lump in my throat. It felt like 
sometimes after i ate certain things i felt like i still had something stuck in my throat so i knew that the only way that i was going to get a peace of mind was through two ways which would be number one a barium test or number two another endoscopy i decided to go with another endoscopy because i felt like okay i can still breathe i can still you know like react fine and i'm still able to eat so there must not be something stuck it just must be like a, like a stricture or it must be something that's just kind of hindering for my food to pass through smoothly or quicker now that i think about it i should cover the costs of what my endoscopy experience was like the first time around i got a really good gastroenterologist like i mentioned so on paper without my insurance or anything it was about um nineteen thousand dollars but at the very end of the day i had to pay around like fifteen hundred dollars um and that is because again i pick someone that was very very well at what they do number one they're really famous in that area which is a very expensive area and at the time i could afford it and i felt okay with doing that now the second time around like i mentioned was a little bit different for me and that was my most recent experience um this second time around i felt like i couldn't really afford it with the insurance i now had so i resorted to going to mexico to get it done and the reason why i felt so comfortable doing that was i felt like i trusted whoever like my family members recommended and now the prep was a little bit different because in this case i had to wake up a lot earlier i had to make sure i didn't eat for those like 10 hours or so um and this time around i was actually really hungry by the time i got to the gastroenterologist's office so i just decided you know what like i'm gonna try to drink a little bit of water because like maybe that'll fill like my stomach up just slightly i drank maybe like half a cup of water um they did the iv right away they were just kind of like ready for me to go um it did feel a little bit more like informal there was more people in the room so we did the endoscopy the gastroenterologist was very thorough which i liked he was more communicative i wanted say than compared to the one here he also was the only doctor that has talked to me about diet they just had me sit down and then slowly kind of like gain consciousness little by little my mom was by my side which is was amazing he told us like you know what you don't have to wait for your results or for anything because we're actually going to send everything now to the labs we're going to do everything right now so if you want to meet in the next like two three hours we can meet at my office which was amazing because my first time around i had to wait about like a month or two to get my results or to even get a call back and he explained to me that the issue that i had going on with the lump in my throat wasn't a result of like just my gut overall but it was a result of my GERD again it was just a symptom that maybe I had never really had um that was new and maybe kind of caused the health anxiety was the fact that he already had the cd and the images set and ready for me and he just handed them to me he's like okay everything's ready and everything's good to go here's the plan that i would follow one cool thing that i had never heard about i felt like there was no other option for me to feel better but it was something that he introduced to me was this thing called sox1 sox1 is a little gel packet comes in little packets and you usually have it before your lunch or your dinner and this helps a lot with your esophagus which is one thing that i had an issue with this time around was the feeling of the lump in the throat the feeling of like irritation in the throat and i felt like i needed to find something for it little by little i have been able to um kind of switch the the esox one which is that sachet that little packet into my own little at home remedy um, which i can share with you guys in a different video but in this case the Essox one really did help for a little bit because it kind of helped to lubricate my throat. He also mentioned that he found a very, very small parasophageal hernia. He did mention that stretching would be good for it, you know, looking into the whole posture thing. And I do have a video all about hiatal hernias in ways that you can start feeling better and even reverse some of the symptoms. But that is pretty much my whole experience with endoscopies. I feel like I have talked way too much about my endoscopies. It feels kind of odd. But um, yeah, so far I haven't had like a traumatic experience. I know some people are afraid of endoscopies for several reasons. Um, I did not feel sore and I did not feel um, like anything internally, personally. For my own opinion, sometimes like I just really want to know if everything is okay and if I can just do something about it. Again, not everything is in our control, but we can always try our best, you know, to, to really upkeep with our life. So with that said, I'm going to end this video. I hope you guys like it. If you have any questions about endoscopies and my experience with it, I can give you my opinion. I am no doctor or 
anything like that so i will not diagnose or treat anything or promise to cure anything but i can give you a guideline give you some of my experience if you're looking for healthy recipes for gastritis and acid reflux feel free to go down below and check out the link where i have my very own recipe book this is the digital recipe book filled with yummy and quick and easy recipes don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you on my next video bye